In this video, I'll be spending another 100 days in Pixelmon. Here are my goals. First, catch an Eevee and obtain all of the evolutions. Second, locate and capture all three Lake Guardians. And third, use the Lake Guardians to help me summon and defeat a legendary from the Creation Trio. Alright, so it's time to start my adventure and pick out my starter Pokemon. I counted to 10, closing my eyes while moving the cursor, and ended up landing on this little fire mouse. I spawned in the world and began my journey on this island in the middle of nowhere. I then explored around for a bit and found the shadow of a Pokemon hovering over some rocks. Now the island was lovely, but I was the only one here and it was starting to get a little lonely. I crafted some tools, as well as this boat, and was about to set sail until I found this Pokeball which was actually a timer ball. Probably the most useless item I could have gotten, but I might need it later on. Now after paddling for a while, I eventually found another island. I made it to land and was hoping this island was bigger than it appeared. It had a couple of different biomes, which was definitely a good sign. I ended up fighting this purple rat and won my first battle with a Pokemon. I also ate a few berries and picked up some apricorns while I was here. As I continued to collect them, I also hoped that I'd find a village as well. I traveled throughout the night, and in the morning, I came to this forest and saw a church up ahead. I was finally able to find a village and was happy to now have my own Poke Center. After stealing some loot from Nurse Joy, I proceeded to heal my party while avoiding all eye contact. I then entered one of the village homes and claimed this house as my property. I also opened this chest, took all the loot, and got a bunch of achievements. I liked the house the way it was, but I still made some improvements to make it more of a home. Now I got up the next morning to check out the market by this village and had already seen a customer arrive here before me. They didn't sell a whole lot, but they did have a lot of blocks and a lot of melons. The melons are crucial if I want to spend all day fighting Pokemon. But before I continue on this quest to become the ultimate trainer, I'd like to dive in in today's sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is an awesome free-to-play mobile game that will put your strategy skills to the test. With over 900 monsters to collect, plus new monsters coming out every week. You can also breed monsters of different elements and rarities to create cool new species. And don't miss the chance to obtain incredible monsters available only in the game's limited time events. Level up your monsters and boost their powers with runes, relics, and talents to gain advantage in the battles ahead. Create the best team and put your strategy to the test in the ultimate challenge. Battling other monster masters in live duels, or in the multiplayer mode where you can conquer trophies, win rewards, and fight for a chance to reach the top leagues. Monster Legends just launched their newest era in the game called the Blossom Era, focused on the awakening of the forces of nature. Check out some of the exclusive nature monsters available in the new era. One of the unique features in the game is the YouTuber Island, where you can find monsters created in collaboration with some of the biggest YouTubers. Find your favorite YouTubers, check out their monsters and the awesome skills they chose for them, and put them to the test. If you download the game now using my link in the description or the QR code on the screen, you'll get a ton of rewards along with the epic monster Kyori. But remember, this is a limited time offer, so make sure you download the game now and claim the rewards which will help you get a head start and speed up your leveling process. Do you have what it takes to become the number one monster master in the world? Now let's get back to hunting down some Pokemon. And by hunt, I really mean get stuck in a battle with a Kakuna who took 10 years to defeat. It was actually getting a bit late after that fight, so I decided to call it a day and spend the night with my Cyndaquil. That was until I got annoyed by this Caterpie who entered my home and somehow became the master of jukes. After a restless night, I got ambushed by another Kakuna while I was checking out this raid den. To prevent the morning from getting any worse, I decided I'd start planting my apricorns. Apricorns take forever to grow, so it's better to start ASAP. After that, I got into a fight with the Sentret and got some leather. Leather can be used to make backpacks, which is something I desperately need. A backpack will give me enough storage space so that I don't have to keep dumping stuff in chests. I fought some Sentrets for leather, fought some sheep for wool, and was about to craft the backpack until this monster started following me. There's nothing worse than having to deal with a Rattata, but thankfully I got away from him. Let me know in the comments what you guys think the most annoying Pokemon is. Now after that, I fought this P-Dove and my Cyndaquil started to evolve. 
He evolved into Quillava, which is great because now that means I can ride him and get to places a lot faster. I'm glad my Pokemon's leveling up and becoming stronger, but I think it's time to add more members to the team. I'll have to get some Pokeballs first, which means I'll need to find a cave with a lot of iron. I spent the whole day trying to find a good cave, but I just couldn't find one. I did find a village though, and those always make me happy. However, there was the scary boss guarding the place, so I planned to get out of here ASAP. I looted the blacksmith and got some diamonds, but I was in desperate need for a bigger backpack. I had no choice but to slaughter a whole bunch of ferrets and sheep for this, but it was absolutely worth it. Now I did eventually find a cave, and a pretty good one at that. My first priority when I got here though was to get a lava bucket. The lava bucket was really helpful in helping out these poor diglets. I understand that the caves can be extremely cold at times, so I thought I might as well warm these guys up. After that, I mined out a firestone shard. I collected even more of them, and ended up making a firestone, which will definitely be useful later on. Now all that was left was to mine some rubies and mine some bauxite. Once that was done, I then returned home and was ready to craft a bunch of things. If I want to make pokeballs, I'll first need to craft an anvil, a vital tool for my workstation. Next, I'll need to waste my diamonds on this pretty little hammer. And lastly, I'll need to make a mechanical anvil, since one of my comments told me I should make one. They told me it would make life a lot easier, so I guess I might as well try it. I placed it down and was pretty excited to see it work. I then went out into the field and harvested all my apricorns. After tossing them in the furnace, I then decided I wanted to make a PC. I began crafting the PC and then I realized I needed a second PC for something else. I smelted even more bauxite to make more aluminum and continued making more plates. I then proceeded to make the second PC, which I'll explain in a bit. But after that, I made some Ultra Ball discs and put them in the mechanical anvil to see them transform into Ultra Ball lids. This honestly saved me a ton of time, and if you guys have any more suggestions, I'd be happy to hear them. Once everything was ready, I then began crafting my balls. Now I was ready to go hunt down some Pokemon. The first Pokemon I caught was unfortunately a Rattata since I needed him for an experiment. However, I did end up catching a Bayleaf, which was pretty sick. Although, it's pretty sad that I won't be keeping these guys for long. My first goal is to get every type of Eevee, and I'm thinking about keeping all of them on the team. I hear that Eevee can be found in the Birch Forest, so I'll be chilling here for a while. I wasn't expecting this, but I did find an Eevee den. Although, I was disappointed as soon as the battle started, because I actually needed a female Eevee to start breeding. Now I found another Eevee a couple days later, and I was really hoping this was a female. Unfortunately it wasn't, but that's not bad at all. I was able to catch it, which means I can breed with him and I don't have to experiment with the rat. After that, I immediately found this Bulbasaur. I thought I might as well catch it and add it to my collection of starters. If we count Eevee, I now have 4 starters, which is kinda insane. Now as I continue to search for the Eevee, I just so happen to find this mysterious structure. Not sure what this place is, but I feel like it's worth checking out. All I found though was a god apple, and a bunch of noises from zombies wanting to eat me. I have a pretty baller team, but I don't think they can defend me from that. Now I eventually found another Eevee, and I crossed my fingers hoping this would be the one. Thankfully it was, and I couldn't have been more grateful. I threw a quick ball on the first turn, and ended up catching it. Now that I have a male and female Eevee, I can now start the breeding process. The first thing I'll need to make is a ranch block, which requires a flower pot, a PC, and a piston. I remember seeing a flower pot at the Pokemart, so I'm just going to take it and hope that the clerks don't mind. I already made the PC, so I have everything I need to make the ranch block. I then placed the ranch block in an open field, and now I'm ready to start breeding. I accessed the machine and plopped my Eevees onto the ranch. However, I think it's kinda harsh making them breed on this filthy grass. So, I decided I'm going to make a giant bed for them. I plan to make it entirely out of wool, but until I get more, I think I'll just use dirt. It's a little dirty, but they'll just have to stick with this for now. It might not be that big of a problem though, since they seem to be enjoying it. I'm just hoping an egg comes out of there soon. Now unfortunately, the time has come for me to murder a bunch of sheep for their wool. But as I replace the dirt blocks with the wool, the Eevee starts sending out these hearts. 
The grey hearts soon became purple, and as soon as I finished off the bed, the purple hearts then became yellow, which is definitely a good sign. After a couple of days, the hearts then became red, and they finally gave me an egg. After claiming the egg, I then headed out to sea. I then went underwater and started mining these shards. They were easy to find, but I did almost drown trying to mine one. Once I got all 9, I then crafted a water stone. After that, I then went on to look for an extreme hills biome. I was on my way to collect some thunderstone shards, but then this turtwig caught my eye. It would break my heart to see this little guy get hurt, so I used a quick ball to capture him. Now I tried to focus on finding the biome, but I got distracted by all these weird looking Pokemon. Although, some of these distractions were extremely cute, like this Togedomaru. In other news, my egg finally hatched into a baby Eevee. I then used my water stone to evolve this guy into Vaporeon. I remember asking viewers in a previous video what their favorite Eevee was, and pretty much everyone said Vaporeon. I'm not really sure why that is, but he looks pretty cool, so I'll give him that. Now I was on my way to continue searching for the extreme hills, but then I found this shopkeeper. He apparently sold evolution stones, and one of them was a thunderstone. I had to sell a bunch of ultra balls to afford it, but I think it was worth it. Now as I wait for this egg to hatch, I think I'll catch another Eevee in the meantime. As I wandered through the birches, I could not believe what was standing in front of me. It was a shiny squaw vet, and I knew I just had to catch it. I used a quick ball to capture him, and just like that, I had caught my first ever shiny. My first one in Pixelmon, that is. I did catch a shiny Magmar in the old Pokemon games, but that was it. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever caught a shiny before, and if so, how many? Now after days of waiting for the stupid Eevee to spawn, I did find a Pikachu. I used a quick ball to catch the Pikachu, and I'm starting to understand just how powerful these balls are. Shortly after, I did find another Eevee, which was a huge relief. He was an absolute pain to catch, but I ended up doing it with a timer ball. By the time I made it back home, my egg had hatched, and I had another one waiting for me. I then used my Thunderstone to evolve an Eevee into Jolteon, and my Firestone for Flareon. I now have all the Eevees that evolve from stones, and I believe that there's just 6 more to go. I already have 2 Eevees in the breeder, so I think I'll just catch 2 more in the wild, and 2 more from eggs. I went back to the birches with my egg, and found another Eevee. Finding Eevees in the wild can be a real pain in the butt, so I'm glad I'll only have to do this one more time. Now for these guys, I think I'm going to turn them into Umbreon and Espeon. I'll have to get both of their happiness up to 220 and evolve Umbreon at night and Espeon in the day. Now the best way to increase happiness is to keep them outside their Pokeball and let them run around with me. It definitely makes sense because I would be happy too if my master didn't keep me locked up in a cage all day. In other news, I started to realize that my eggs take forever to hatch. I definitely needed them regardless, but I felt like if I made some running shoes, then the egg would hatch faster. It doesn't really matter though, since the egg's about to hatch and I just found the last Eevee. This one was a little annoying, but I still caught it and was ready to head back home. Now I know this might look a little crazy, but I actually have a plan for what I'm gonna do with these guys. The Eevees and the Quick Balls are going to be kept outside and I'll be evolving them into Umbreon, Espeon, and Sylveon. As for the rest, I'll evolve one into Leafeon, one into Glaceon, and one will be kept normal. Now my first objective is to locate a mossy rock, which shouldn't be hard to find. I found one pretty easily in the forest, and all I had to do was level up next to it. I gave my Eevee a piece of candy, which helped him evolve into Leafeon. Now I just need to head over to the ice plains and find an ice rock. It might take a while to find it, but I'm actually fine with that. This will give me a lot of time to boost their happiness from now until then. Now I've made it to this glorious ice rink, but I don't see any ice planes close by. I didn't stop searching though, and I eventually found it past the trees. I also found this really angry looking boss who looked like he just needed to cool down. Now after finding an ice rock, I started to evolve my Eevee into Glaceon. The journey of just getting here will also help me evolve two more Eevees. I was finally able to get their happiness to 220, and all I have to do now is level them up. At night, I evolved one Eevee into Umbreon, and in the day, I evolved the other one into Espeon. Now I just need to evolve one more Eevee and I'll be done with this goal. 
Now the last EB is a little different because I have to level him up in a flowery forest and I have to make sure he knows a fairy move. I don't really know where a flowery forest is, so I tried asking for directions from this guy, but I think he chose to ignore me. I tried asking this giant whale if he knew anything, but he was too busy suffocating. I even asked this Alakazam if he could just throw a spoon in the right direction, but he wouldn't budge. I had no choice but to find it myself, which took no longer than 2 seconds, because it was actually right next to my home. I then evolved my last Eevee into Sylveon, my favorite out of all of them. It was at that moment where I had completed my first goal of catching an Eevee and obtaining all of the evolutions. Collecting all the Eevees was one of my biggest Pokemon goals as a child that I never accomplished. Now there's 9 Eevees and only 6 slots, so the hardest part is choosing who's going to be on the team. I think this team will do it for now, but I'll probably make changes later. Now that I have a full team, I think it's time for me to take on some gyms. I found this gym earlier, but I stood no chance with my lineup. Now the gym wasn't that bad and was pretty easy for the most part until I had to deal with this giant mudkip that was owned by the gym leader. I did defeat him though with the help of my Sylveon and earn the wave badge along with a TM. After the gym, I had to decide which Pokemon I wanted to put all my effort into training and I decided it would be Umbreon. I plan to take on the three Lake Guardians, and I feel like Umbreon would be best in battle. They're all Psychic types against the Dark types, so I don't think they can do that much damage. I also don't plan on leveling him up too much, because I don't think I really need to. I'll probably only get him up to level 40, because that's when he learns a really good move called Dark Pulse. I also decided I'm going to put Jolteon back on the team so that he can paralyze people. I then went to the birch forest and waited patiently by some surface water, hoping Mesprit would spawn. I eventually got the message and began panicking because he did not spawn in the little pond I was next to. He's also supposed to be super tiny so that might make him easy to miss. Now thankfully, I did find him and I was more than relieved. I had a lot of faith in my team and I could not wait to get this battle started. I used a couple of dark pulses to get him low, but then he used rest and healed up to full. I was actually happy that he went to sleep because now that means he's easier to catch. However, he didn't sleep forever so I couldn't constantly throw balls at him. The battle was taking forever and I even ran out of dark pulses at one point. He was running out of moves too, which meant I could take out my Jolteon and paralyze him. The fight lasted so long that it eventually turned to daytime and I had to wait until nighttime to use my Dusk Balls. I paralyzed him, I got him super low, and I used Dusk Balls at night, but none of that even mattered. After going all the way up past 70 turns, the Mespert used Struggle and fainted. That was by far the most soul crushing defeat I ever had in Pokemon and I don't think I can recover from that. The next morning however, I did find something that would make me feel better. I found an epic boss near my home and I was pretty excited to take it on. I was getting owned by this boss but I had a bunch of revives so I figured I could take him down the slow way. Now I thought this battle would take forever but the strangest thing ended up happening. I revived Umbreon and used one dark pulse to defeat him without even getting his health down to zero. If someone could explain how I did that, that would be great because I have no idea what happened. Besides that, I had to come up with a new game plan for catching these legendaries and the most brilliant idea popped up in my head as soon as I found this portal. I entered the portal into the ultra space dimension and was hoping to find some end cities. I hear there's a small chance for Master Balls to be an end city chest, so I thought I might as well give this a shot. I immediately got hit by one of the shulkers and flew all the way to the top. I then got backed into a corner because these shulkers were super mad at me for some reason. Now I didn't find any Master Balls, but I did get some pretty good loot. I definitely didn't need any of this armor, but I might as well take it. Now this place might be infested with shulkers, but at least I won't have to worry about fall damage. Besides the monsters and OP loot, I did open a chest to find a lustrous orb, the orb that's used to summon Palkia. I guess that means I'll be fighting Palkia at the end of this journey, which I'm pretty excited about. Now I defeated this Blastoise with my Umbreon, and I'm not sure how I did that, but I used a netball on this guy and ended up catching him. After the battle, I found this camera up and I thought my Blastoise had a good chance of beating it. 
I was excited to fight it on the chance that he drops a Master Ball, but then I saw that my Blastoise just had defensive moves. That explains why he was so easy to beat, but then I had this brilliant idea to teach him this water move that I got from the gym leader. However, even with his giant shell, Blastoise cannot learn Razor Shell. I was pretty bummed out by that, but at least I finally found a Master Ball. Although, the time it took to get that Master Ball was not worth it, considering I had to go through multiple end cities just to find one. I might be leaving with just one Master Ball, but hey, at least it's something. Now before I head back to the Birches, I think I want to level up my Jolteon first. I'll need to raise his speed so that he can attack first and paralyze the enemy. Now I thought about defeating Dens with Umbreon and getting candies that way, but it might be better to just take Jolteon to the ocean. However, the ocean dens were a lot more powerful than I thought they were. There were also a lot of interesting Pokemon here that I've never seen before. After a bit of sailing, I found this Latios den and tried to fight it, but my team was not the best. There were definitely a lot of weaker Pokemon here, but I just chose to fight the strongest den since they grabbed my attention. Some of the dens weren't that bad though, like this Armaldo who was really easy to defeat. Now I was having a little too much fun in the ocean, so I decided to wrap things up after defeating this turtle. I then got my Jolteon to level 40, and was now ready to catch some legendaries. I went back to the birches to find Mesprit, and decided I would use my Master Ball on him. I then looked through his moves, and immediately regretted my decision since it was impossible for him to do anything to my Umbreon, and the fight would have been easy. I'm still happy I got him, but it's going to be a huge struggle to get the other two. Now the next Lake Guardian spawns in surface water as well, but this time just in a regular forest. I AFK'd until the message popped up, and that's when I went into full panic mode. All of the Guardians are tiny, but thankfully I was able to find him. First I paralyzed him with a Thunder Wave. Next I used Umbreon's Dark Pulse to get him to the red. Then I waited till nighttime to use my Dusk Balls. And finally, I would use multiple Dusk Balls to capture him. It took me 42 turns to catch this guy, but at least it was a lot better than my fight with Mesprit. Now the last Lake Guardian spawns in the roofed forest biome, so I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time finding that. When I defeated Mr. Mime, he dropped a really good fairy TR, which I can give to my Sylveon. I then headed out to sea to find the biome, and this Kloitzer dropped some really good items as well. He gave me Hydro Pump, and I think I'll give that to my Vaporeon. After a bit of searching, I had finally found the roofed forest biome. Once the message popped up, I then raced towards the nearest pond and found Uxie spinning around in the water. I was prepared for this battle to last a century, but I actually caught him with just a few dusk balls. I then returned home and was happy to complete my second goal of catching all three lake guardians. The objective now is to get all three of them to level 60 and get their happiness to 255. Once that happens, I'll then be able to enchant some rubies to make a red chain. I'll be using that along with the lustrous orb to summon Palkia, if I can find a time space altar. Now the lake guardians are all level 50, so I feel like the best way to train them is through raid dens. While I looked for strong dens, I just so happened to find an Espeon and a Vaporeon. I ended up catching both of them and began regretting my decision of spending so much time hunting Eevees down. But now that I have a stronger Vaporeon, I might as well give him Hydro Pump and start using him in battles. Pretty soon after that, a message appeared of a Tapu Bulu spawning in a jungle biome. I don't know what this thing is, but he looks cool and I want to catch him. I got him pretty low, but then he took recoil from Woodhammer and ended up fainting. For the record, that one's not on me since there was no way I could have stopped that. Moving on, I eventually found a Rock Gym which was perfect for training. All the Pokemon here are equal to my team's highest level, so I'll definitely need to rely on my Vaporeon here. However, the point of this is to train my legendaries, so I'll only use them if I have no choice. I already got my Mesprit to level 60, and I plan to get my Azelf there next. I don't think I can get Uxie to level 60, but he'll be sure to get a lot from this. Now this Tyranitar was insanely strong, so I had to swap out my Mesprit and bring him down one level to beat him. I swapped him out for my Blastoise, who wasn't that strong, but was definitely a good defense. Pretty soon, I climbed out of that cave, making it all the way up to the final boss, who I was more than prepared for. The gym leader's team was crazy strong, so I had to be careful here. Even though Rock is one of the worst Pokemon types, I still don't have many counters to it. But with that being said, I don't think it really matters. 
I was down to my last Pokemon, but I ended up defeating him and got the Cliff Badge. After the gym, I went back to hunting down dens when all of a sudden a message appeared in chat. I found the Lunala den close by and I had high hopes that my Umbreon could defeat it since he's good against both Psychic and Ghost types. Sadly though, they gave me the worst possible team and I just knew this wasn't going to work out. Now Psychic types aren't good against a lot of Pokemon, but they are good against Poison types for some reason. Which is why I decided to stay in this biome for a while and train my Uxie since there are a lot of Poison types here. I also found a couple of bosses and decided to fight them. I didn't beat him, but I did get an ultimate boss down to half HP, which is pretty impressive. As the sun was setting, an Eternatus had appeared in a den in a lush swamp biome. It sure didn't take long to find him, because this guy has to be the biggest Pokemon I've ever seen. In fact, he might just be the biggest Pokemon ever, maybe even bigger than Waylord. I tried fighting with a Psychic type against Poison, but I didn't get my hopes up. But just like that Swampert though, we did get him to half HP before he blew us out, which is not that bad. A loss is still a loss though, but I did get a dub when I found this Mudkip. I ended up catching Mudkip with a netball and added him to my ever-growing collection of starters. I honestly thought of making it a goal to collect every single starter, but then again, that might just kill me. Although, it would make me very happy. Almost as happy as this guy who's just living his best life out here. Now it looks like I just need one more level on my Uxie and I'll be ready to go fight Palkia. Hopefully this Corsola gives me some candy, and once she does, I'll head out and find another portal. Took me a couple nights, but I did end up finding one and was ready to head in. Once I entered the Ultra Space, I had already found an end city. I also stumbled into some strange looking Pokemon that looked like a clown with a disco ball as a head. I used a psychic attack and got his HP low, but then I made the mistake of swapping in my Jolteon in which he killed immediately. I was way too bothered by that, so I decided to just end it there. I definitely could have just revived him there, but I feel like I'll need all of those for Palkia. I later found another sick looking Pokemon whose name sounds like a toddler trying to say purple. I failed catching the last guy, but I wasn't going to let that happen again. I got him super low with a bunch of quick attacks and ended up catching him, but then right after, I found an even bigger version of him. I've learned my lesson from the other dens, and I decided it'd be better to not waste my time. Now I almost forgot to mention that I'm here because I'm trying to find a time space altar. I can find one in the ice mountains, and I can also find one in the other dimension, but this one's more fun. I was able to find some snow on top of this fortress, so I think I'm getting close. I eventually made it to an ice plains, so I felt like I was getting closer. After a bit more searching, I had finally found the time space altar and was already getting a little nervous. This will be the stage for the final battle in this Pixmon world. I had all three late guardians with me at level 60 and at max happiness. I then took out the rubies and started punching the guardians with them, taking their life force and also taking their levels. With the Ruby of Willpower, the Ruby of Knowledge, and the Ruby of Emotion, I was able to craft a Red Chain. I then used the Red Chain on the altar and was getting pretty hyped with what was going on. I then used the Lustrous Orb and knew that this was it. The final battle. Everything I trained for would all come down to this. I first tried paralyzing him, but he took down my Jolteon instantly. I was able to do a little bit of damage with Umbreon, but not a whole lot. I then revived Jolteon and tried to use another Thunder Wave, but he sent him back to the grave. My Az Elf was completely useless. My Uxie was a little less useless, but still useless, which left my Mesprit to be the last Guardian standing. Mesprit did his best and did some damage, but this Palkia kept healing up with Aqua Ring. Vaporeon was my best chance here, considering he's a water type and my highest level. However, he ended up fainting, leaving me with just two Pokemon. I eventually got him paralyzed and used a bunch of balls on him, but his HP was always too high. Things were looking kind of bleak, and I didn't know what to do. I was running out of options and running out of Pokemon, so I decided to end things there and defeat the God of Space. An unfortunate ending, but at least I was able to complete my third and final goal. Regardless, I had a lot of fun making this video, and I can't wait for the next one. Thank you again to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to use the link at the top of my description to download Monster Legends on your mobile device. I'd like to give one last big thank you to all the viewers for watching, take care, and I will see you next time.